Uh, good afternoon, to Professor Fincham, to Dr. McKeezy, uh, Jean Harris, Dr. Harris, and uh, all the organizers. Uh, let me mention Dr. George Hughes, with whom I worked for many years, and, and to all of you. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I've got 14 minutes. I'm going to leave some time. I hope if Rob indicates to me whether I'm going fast or slow, for, for questions and debate. But I am going to bombard you with, with pictures. So if you blink, you're going to miss it, I'm afraid. I wonder if this light needs to be on. Because I'd rather you looked at the slides than at me. <laughs> Ian? Okay, so uh, the talk is on alien invasions and the, the outline is the threat and the management and biosecurity and where we're going. I do feel sometimes that these things that I'm preaching to the converted that uh, you all know about these things or should know about them. But I also find that, that what, we, what we see with many scientists and practitioners is, is that they, they do not look at the future impacts of, of invasions. I think that invasion biology is a very, very underrated uh, threat. And, and it's not just what we have now, it's what's, what's going to happen. It's like a, a medical doctor looking at somebody and saying, well, you've got just a little bit of cancer in this part of your body, so you don't have to worry too much. But the cancer is going to spread. And that's the problem with the invasions that we already have and those that we are going to that we're going to have. Now, George, forgive me for this, but I couldn't resist saying uh, when many years ago I gave a talk, well, when I first started with CADA, the Working for Water program, there were some old salts in the then uh, Natal Parks Board who said it won't work. Uh, and, and George invited me back to a talk many years later. Uh, so I used that as, as my heading, so I thought I'd reuse the heading. Uh, it certainly has worked, as I hope I'll be able to show you, although we have an astonishing challenge. So invasion, invasions are, are species that have evolved in other parts of, of the world, in this case, and have uh, come to our country, some of which have then been able to outcompete the species, uh, our indigenous species. And here's an, a, a set of slides now of West Nile virus, which has huge impacts on animals, but also kills people with meningitis and encephalitis. That's uh, when they were introduced into the United States in 1999, 2000. And you can see how quickly they spread across, across the US. A little study that I found very interesting, which was looking at viruses, but, but they took dollar bills and they they, they marked them in four different centers in the U.S. and they looked over a two-week two period of where the dollar bill, bills ended up. And you could, can see this massive movement that you're getting of dollar bills. And if dollar bills are moving, then you're going to find all sorts of other things moving because, for the most part, they're moving in people's pockets. Uh, now, s several years ago, Ezembello did a, a very good study for us that led to the formation of the KwaZulu-Natal Invasive Alien Species Program, and looking at Chromalina, the triffid weed, in, in Chichli and Falozi in particular. And, and these are a set of slides which I've probably used more than any other. Um, but this was looking down at looking for the last of the rhino and things in, in Chichli, but all of that is Chromalina. And our animals will not eat uh, chromalina. That was the level of invasion. You can just make it out in the top part, um, in yellow, uh, in the top part of Rukhuri there in 1985, 1998, 2002, and we're saying at that point within 10 years it would be fully invaded. If it was invaded, there would be nothing for the animals to eat, no animals, no tourists, no tourists, no jobs, and that scenario that was painted at the time. We've spent over 100 million rand in Chukhui Mfalozi alone on Trifford weed. 100 million rand trying to deal with this, with this problem. Uh, and I've learned to my horror that, that the funding for this year has not yet come through. 
Uh, and so many of the gains that we've made could be lost if this does not happen uh, very urgently. So it's something I will be addressing tomorrow. But it's not just Cochlearium fallosi, it's also all the other areas where Cromolina could invade. And it's particularly the rural poor who are not able to to fend off uh, the the advance and the having to do follow-up after follow-up against it. Also has a big impact on water. Uh, another example is Lantana, um, a species that is spreading all over KwaZulu and elsewhere, uh, and that impact that it's having on, on, on cattle. The pom-pom weed, it's, it's marching into, into KwaZulu. Uh, that's the level of distribution at the moment, but it could invade effectively the entire grasslands of, of, of our country. Uh, and again, our animals don't eat uh, pom pom weed, and it will take over unless we find effectively a very good biological control, but with the other work that we might do. But probably the, the scariest of them at the moment is the famine weed, the parthenium. And Colette will be talking on that uh, in the session uh, directly after tea. And she and Ian Rushworth and many others are doing, doing some sterling work in trying to address this horrific. Uh, invasion that is now taking place. But there's an abandoned homestead that's fully invaded by, by famine weed. Uh, here's a pension payout point. Uh, the vehicles are, are the vector for the invasion. All of that is famine weed. Uh, Ndumu. When I was young, Ndumu was, was the reserve to have been to. It was like seeing a pearls fishing owl. All of that is famine weed. This is the top picture on the, on the left, is a fence line in, in Khuklui. Look at the famine weed behind that. And the irony is that, that the vehicles are the, are the principal uh, vectors for the invasion. And the people who are doing most of the damage are the rangers and, and the Working for Water program. So we're going out into these areas, the, the weeds are being picked up by the tires and the, the, the grids, the grills and then being dropped in the, in the park. And, and the invasion by these species is incredibly rapid. They leave the pathic, their, their seeds last for 50 years. Um, they can set seed within a period of a month. It really is a Frankenstein impact, uh, invader. And the impact that it has, if you look at these kids down below, they're walking in, in that avenue of Parthenium. Uh, but you can see some of the impacts on the, on the skin, uh, the lesions that occur from, from touching uh, parthenium. But you also get respiratory problems being exacerbated by parthenium. And here are some of the statistics, uh, just, just the impact on agriculture reduction uh, in Ethiopia of 80, up to 80% in yield reduction for sorghum, 80% for cattle, 90% uh, reduction of pasture forage, a species loss of up to 95% in India, habitat change, a total habitat change of 100% in Australia in some areas, and then the allergies up to 20% in Australia, 42% in India, um, being allergic to this. Allergic to the point where you can't actually be with it. You have to move away from it. And and the bottom left picture shows where we are currently in South Africa, as far as we know. Again, this is spreading very rapidly. Uh, that is the climate model as to where it will spread, but you can see for Africa where it will spread, and you can see the current and potential spread for the world uh, currently uh, in red. So we really are sitting with a, with a, uh, with a massive problem with famine weed. But it's not just plants. So rats are eating a third of all the grain. Uh, aside from the disease, you have, um, uh, well, I've gone back to plants now, but the, the impact on water from the pine and hackia that are invading and the fires that come from that. Um, albatross chick here on Tristan Island being eaten alive by mice. Uh, chestnut trees in the US uh, with chestnut blight and the impact that that had. Uh, here's Phytophthora having an impact on what happens to be one of our invasive trees, the Monterey pine, but we don't want invasions of any type. Uh, 
the Calerpa seaweed in the Mediterranean, the zebra mussel choking up, that's a pick and pay type of, of uh, trolley. The lionfish, you can see the figure there, eating 79% uh, of all juvenile fish on a patch of reef, reef in just five weeks. Uh, the, the mites, the, 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 all the various agriculture problems that we have, uh, invasions. The ants here, the fire ants, they haven't come to South Africa, but inevitably they will get to South Africa uh, with big impacts for biodiversity, but they also kill people. Um, various button spiders, we have our own, but we don't want any more. But thank you very much for this opportunity to to share this concern with you, but also this fantastic opportunity to create further jobs and to deal with probably the single biggest threat to biodiversity that there is. Thank you.